But we begin, as always, with three things investors ought to be thinking about right now. Bond investors are on high alert with a debt ceiling deadline looming in Washington. How long before the X date and why it doesn't seem to bother the stock market? Netflix kicked off tech earnings on a dismal note, but the company's crackdown on password sharing could help to drive revenue. And Bud Light is facing backlash over its partnership with a transgender influencer, but the company's stock is hardly phased. We'll tell you why. On the Barron's Roundtable, my colleagues Ben Levison, Carlton English, and Jack Howe. So, Ben, we missed your analysis of the stock market last week. What's been happening? Something happened? No, I was <laughs> gone for a week, and I get back, and the S&P 500 did almost nothing. I think it was down 0.1% this week. And there's Which, actually, you could say if you had not been around for two years. I, I could say that, <laughs> and maybe that would have been better. But I look at you know what's going on, and there's all these worries out there, but none of them are pressing at this point. And we also have earnings season going on, so there's all this news coming out, but it's all very company-specific. So you're getting big stock moves in things like AT&T and Tesla. They're dropping, but you're getting Snap on an Abbott, and they're going up, it all kind of evens out, and you get a market that goes nowhere. And that is reflected in a VIX of about 16. Uh, but just in case this is too boring, what is it, Ben's boring, Barron's roundtable? Something like that. Get excited about the debt ceiling showdown. Oh, yes, this is heating up now. We got a plan finally from the Republicans. Um, they offered it up. It has all the things that Republicans really want. Still can't get everybody to back it yet. Uh, Kevin McCarthy's working hard to get that done. If he does, it'll get sent to the Senate, where they're going to change it around and send it back, and it's going to be lots of negotiations and whatnot. The big problem here is that we're kind of running out of time. Uh, Treasury has a certain amount of money. It's using these extraordinary measures to try to make things run okay. But tax receipts have been kind of lower than expected, and that means that we could actually see the Treasury run out of money by you know June 15th is where it's trying to get to, but before then. And that would mean that we really need to get something passed, or we risk of default. And as Jack likes to say, uh, the rules of debt ceiling chicken are you got to make everybody believe you're going to crash. So it yeah. could get ugly. But while we wait for Armageddon, we've got some reports coming out next week on CPI, on um, growth. What are you looking for? Well, we're going to get P uh, PCE. PCE, not CPI. Right, which is uh, the Fed's favorite metric. And here, this is one where, you know, if everyone wants to know, is the Fed done? Are we going to get one more hike and the Fed's going to call it off? Is the Fed going to stop now? This PCE report could tell something if it does show that inflation is continuing continues to, uh, to slow down. And then the other thing we're getting is uh, first quarter GDP, which really isn't going to matter all that much. It's supposed to come in around 1.5 percent or so, um, but it's backward looking. The thing I'd be watching is jobless claims. They've actually been rising um, on a 13-week moving average basis. Okay. And that actually has a pretty good history of predicting a recession um, sometime about three to four months uh, after that starts happening. So that's what I'd really be watching next week. I want to go to Carlton and ask about an icon of popular culture that is retiring or being retired. Those envelopes from uh, Netflix, no more DVDs after September. Yeah, so I mean, get them while you can, I guess. <laughs> but a lot more important news for Netflix now. Um, one, they kind of bungled that live viewing of that Love is Blind reunion. Um, you know, that doesn't really bode well if they plan to get into sports, which it seems like they want to do, because as angry as people were about that TV show, imagine if it was like a Super Bowl or something like that. But uh, things to get excited about with Netflix. Um, we all hate the password crackdown, but as an investor, that's good. Netflix experimented with that in Canada and found that subscribers actually do come back when you know they're forced to pay there's a little bit of lag there and the other thing their ad uh, business they're actually Netflix is getting more money from people who use the ad uh, supported version of it because the ad dollars so two things as an investor to get excited about and next week maybe just run down a list of all the tech earnings we're gonna hear about yeah so it's gonna be Microsoft Amazon Alphabet and Meta I think the big picture is a lot of these companies are going to be focusing more on cost cutting and the other thing to note is when it comes to the cloud business which is supposed to be big for many of those companies they're actually finding that people businesses spend less on the cloud in downtimes Jack, I am dodging controversy because I'm an IPA guy, so there's no uh, Bud Light to be found in my fridge. I, yeah, I, I love tiptoeing around culture war stuff like I like being chased by hornets through a manure fire. So <laughs> thank you for this opportunity. The Bud Light uh, trans on a can controversy, as they say. Bud Light, as you might know, sponsored Instagram posts from a trans influencer and sent her, just her, custom beer cans. They did not, I repeat, not replace all the cans at your local 7-Eleven with trans cans. But there was a backlash just the same. There were threats against Anheuser facilities. Kid Rock posted a video shooting up Bud Light. 
bow witty bop a boom but but what the heck is going on? I forget the exact lyrics. It's been a minute since I heard that song. Um, and there were threats of a boycott, of course. Our regular Barron says the financial effect of this um, is likely to, to not be very meaningful for, for Anheuser. The stock has slightly outperformed this year. It, it, I've heard the phrase go woke, go broke. If you took uh, Anheuser and combined it with Disney and Nike, two other companies I've heard that about, the three of them are outperforming the market this year, which proves a, an investing uh, thesis of mine. Not all stuff that rhymes makes for a good investment strategy. <laughs> Boycott all you want, but keep it out of your portfolio. All righty. Thanks, guys.